Welcome back to the program. We're slowly winding down, but not before the second equally engaging conversation. In a press conference held earlier this month, the People's Redemption Party gubernatorial candidate in the 2023 Enugu election, Comrade Chris Agu, expressed hope about the future of Nigeria under the leadership of President Bola Tinubu. Here's a recap. And this oil is in the country. It is although true that Tinumbu inherited a diabetic government, very diabetic in nature. That does not mean there is no solution. There is still hope for Nigeria. And I know there is still hope. God cannot just divinely bring a man to punish the people. But you see, at times when God brings a man, Evil people will go around him. Some ministers are there for nothing. Some office appointees are not even helping matters. Some governors are not even helping matters with local government chairmen. The, the, the hardship inflicted on people by the governors and the local government chairmen all are transferred to Tumbu. Because everybody now is a fuel, fuel. Yes where everybody is suffering. Nobody can tell you that it's not feeling the pains. Yet there are solutions. Thank you for staying with us. To explain his stand, of course, and the need for that timely media engagement, we are joined now by the 2023 PRP gubernatorial candidate in the Enugu election, Comrade Chris Agu Elder. Comrade Chris Ago, thank you for being with us this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. So a lot was said. You know, you've made your stand very clear. You are supporting the president, saying that there is still hope for Nigeria. But what prompted this media engagement in the first place? Um, I was a, a foundation member of uh, Alliance for Democracy, AD. I was a major financier of that party in Kaduna. My good friend, Senator She Usani, both of us, and uh, Tony Mwadike, Kate Mwana, and a few others. So we are AD in Kaduna, before our late General Madaki joined us. I've known Tinumbu for a long time, within this period. Even when I was Director of Amnesty International in charge of 19 Northern States, we used to meet. So during the June 12th era, even when he went on exile, he was very handy supporting the struggle for urgent return to civilian rule in Nigeria. So he has been very active. And again, I was the only Enugu man that joined his team in submitting his nomination form during the last presidential election. That was on Wednesday. But apart from that, in 2004, a prophet, Femi Oloye, of Jeremy Mansara from Kaduna, told me that Tinubu will be president of Nigeria in future. In presence of General Mamavasa's wife, who introduced me to the man, and gave me prayer and assignment of what I should be doing annually in order for this thing to come to pass. And the man equally said that he will not be alive by then. So, and I know when they go to Kaduna today, they will see the family of this Yoruba man. He's late now. I know Tinubu mean well. But there was a message the man said should deliver to him the moment he becomes the president, and that will save him from crisis. I wrote a letter to him sometime last year, requesting to see him and deliver that message. Nobody answered. I know there is hope. You see, people around this man that are not helping the matters. I've said it. Who are his advisors? Is there any historian in his cabinet? All these ICT, bankers, economies, all these things. No. When Dr. Chubo Karibo was 
political advisor to Shehu Shagari, look at the simple tactics. People should go back to history and know how a government succeeded. Now, they appointed what they call presidential liaison officer. In all the states then, I remember one of my role models, Dr. Dozi Ikedife, who was then appointed as a presidential liaison officer in old Anambra state. Uh, Chief Collins Obi was appointed that of Imo. Likewise, other states, the essence of this is that when federal government brings anything to the people in any state, these people will handle it and make sure it reach to the grassroots. Today, they will send it to the governors, and the governors will pocket it. The governors will not allow what is coming from the federation to reach the poor masses. For instance, during Buhari's time, I made all efforts to see uh, one of uh, Buhari's aides to inform him that this is what this man should do. During the COVID, all the palliative we are sent through the governors. They did not deliver anything. Now, the educational feeding for primary school. The satanic cabals in uh, Buhari's government connived with the state governors. Mm. They made sure they raised billions, 10 times more than the budget of entire federal ministry of education mm -hmm. was given for feeding of primary school children. We are, we are, we are, we are, you can't see anything going on. They will now shift this money to the governors and then share the money again. Then the governors will now start giving them beans without proper oil, congealed oil. The populace will eat and they will start purging. Small time, they stop that. They go and check the amount spent within that period for feeding of primary school. That's a government good plan, but the cabals around the government refused to advise the government properly. Mm -hmm. If they had appointed presidential zone officer in all the states, let me tell you, the governors will sit up. And do sir, what they're supposed yes, to do. Sir, need for. This, this mm. is something that you said. Well, Audrey, just before you okay. come in, you know, I'd like to take you back to a key statement that you made. Yes. That you had a dream. And in that dream, you had a revelation about what you want to tell Tinubu. You have a message it's for President Tinubu. It's not a dream. It's not a vision. I said, tell me a lawyer. All right. Told me what to tell him. Okay. The moment so, he has Zoom office, I should endeavor to see him to avoid the president. So this happened in problem. reality. 2024. 2024. And you no, 2004. 2004. And you've not been given the opportunity to see President Sinubu yes. deliver this message. Yes. All right. And you, you can actually ahead. attribute this to apparently what we are facing at this point in time for not delivering that simple message to the presidency. That's clearly. That is just because the moment he sees me and I inform him what this man should say, I should tell him. He will sit up. Mm. Are you still working hard to, you know, get this message through him? No, I've written once. I've not write again. Mm -hmm. I've talked to the press. If he has good uh, informants and capable hands, they will make it possible for me to see him. But um, mm -hmm. the situation I want the to message is good. It's for yeah. his own good, not yeah. for me. I'm not looking for jobs. People, people out there right now, we somewhat be looking like, okay. I want to ask this question. Yes, go ahead. Why do you believe so much in the presidency of, in the administration of President Ahmed Bola Tinubu? Why do you believe so much? Mm. Yes, because his emergence is divine, divinely made. And let me tell you, what God uh, did not know does not exist. And what God did not approve eh, will never take uh, shape. So, many people will say, ah, they rig, they rig. Even in Enugu, they say they rig. I decided not to appeal against the judgment of the tribunal in Enugu State Governorship DC because I know that, look, Peter Mba, mm. God must have appointed him for him to pass through all the hurdles and eventually imagine as the governor. Hardly anybody can pass through what that man passed and still... <laughs> Subsidized, but, no. but they said in the Bible that God is not an author of confusion. Like, at least it, it should be, if it's what it is, then it should mm. be something very plain and clean Thank and you. simple. Thank you. God can appoint, mm. God appointed Saul in the Bible. The Saul not disobey God, 
Are you going to blame God for appointing somebody? You can only know a man when he's in position of money and authority. Mm -hmm. Yes, so God can appoint. You know God once said he regrets creating man. Mm -hmm. God right. can appoint a man and when he yeah. comes, if there's no proper guidance, eh? somewhere in those days there were people that guide those kings. Yes, some kings rejected the okay. professor advice so you have made it clear now that you do have a message for president Tinubu, and you are citing the chaos that has ensued because you have been unable to deliver this message yes. to president Tinubu, and that brings us directly to the state of the nation we're seeing a protest that is going to commence tomorrow the fearless october one and then subsequently will be called fearless in october we're seeing the fuel price hike People are leaving the country. You know, we're seeing low-key celebrations time and time again because of the state of the nation. What is your perspective? What is your view on the states, on the state of this nation? I've said it time with that number. If there's any fearlessness in coming up tomorrow, I'm just back new in the country. And um, I'm still praying to God that I meet with His Excellency Hamilton. You see... At times, people around somebody may be telling him, all is well, all is well. At times, they wouldn't even allow the person to hear news or watch the TV. Yes, they call it security, all these things. But when you travel abroad, you see the leadership there. They watch, they listen. They allow people with positive mind to come and talk to them. And so those benefiting from the government may not want the country to smile. So, um, I, we still need, I still need to see him. Mm. The moment I see him and they get, deliver that message, if things continue to go this way, then mm. <laughs> um, I will tell you to mm, attend. So in, is, in your press conference, you said that, uh, well, people had accused you of being financed by the president because of the number of dedications that you've given, most of your awards you've dedicated to President Bola Tinubu. You know, so a lot of this has made you feel as if they are trying to mock you or saying negative things about you. Some people would even see you and say Jagaban, isn't it? Yeah, that's According correct, 100%. Your... Great, so, yeah. so why, why would they say that? You see, when you have a mandate or assignment from God, Tinubu was not the only person I've done it for. The prayer that brought Sullivan Chime to power was organized by me. It's there in the newspaper. I will tell you the page. In 2006, I went around the whole Enugu from Kaduna. I've already done the one of Kaduna, the churches for God's divine intervention in Enugu State. I came down here, went to all the churches with uh, prayer requests that people should pray for God's divine intervention. And they prayed. That was how Sullivan emerged. The only man that called me in Enugu State to thank me was the um, Igwe of um, Paul Oborg, his Royal Highness, Paul Oborg, late of blessed memory. He called me one day at his office um, at Edinburgh and said, Chris, I read from the newspaper the prayer you organized for Enugu State that that was what brought Sullivan to power and that he was instrumental in suggesting to Chimaroke about uh, bringing Solomon. Solomon was not even in the picture. Without that prayer, mm. Enugu would have been more devastated than now. Mm -hmm. So Solomon was a lesser devil to be compared with the kind of people that would have governed Enugu. And when you check the record of those that have governed Enugu from Chimaroke time to date, you will see that Solomon, uh, no, we are not judging the governor now. We are just judging three past regime. You see that Sullivan tribe more than Shimaroke and uh, Ifan Uguan. All right. Okay. Um, this, going back to the state of the nation, right? Yes. And from your conference, uh, press conference. Sorry, to... I did not clear okay. what is now. What I have been doing for Tinubu is very simple. Because the man of God, Femi Oloye, said we should start celebrating him. I should start celebrating him in advance if this prophecy was to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Sun newspaper, April 30th, page 30, why we celebrate Tinimbo annually. By 2019, Tinimbo have not indicated interest that is even coming out to contest. The can see full page of that newspaper. I said it why we are celebrating him. The man said we should celebrate him in advance with my money, 
everything. There's no year I don't spend over five million helping the poor, the needy. And if you go through all the uh, numerous awards I've received, I always dedicate it to Tinumbu, my mentor, His Excellency Alaji Barabe Musa, mm -hmm. and Chief CCO, no, bless him, these three people. And that is why people assume. Radio Nigeria, not even. Yeah, tell us about that. Radio feud. Nigeria. Tell us about the feud. You know, the, you also talked about, you addressed a lingering feud between you and the management of Radio Nigeria. The, tell look, us about that. Because of that, they said I collect money from Tinumbu. Because every year I give uh, to uh, this uh, our cleaners in Radio Nigeria, about 21 of them, own one bag of rice. I give them cow to celebrate the Christmas and tell them to pray for Tinumbu to govern this country. Mm -hmm. The management now believes that, uh, that Tinumbu is financing me and I'm not giving them anything. Mm -hmm. As a result, they demoted me from control. So was there anger uh, about the suspicion of Tinubu financing you or was it that you were giving palliatives to these cleaners? Not even pal that I received money from Tinubu. <laughs> that was and, their anger. And they are not getting anything. Mm. And the low income earners in radio and cleaners are the one benefiting. benefiting. So <laughs> that was their anger. Now, even in the letter they wrote, letter of the motion, they said that there was an error made by them in 2009 in my promotion, in mm. my career progress. That sounds like INEC. Uh, so that they are reversing it. Mm. Then, I, I, since 2014, I've been petitioning until Public Complaint Service Commission gave a resounding judgment mm. in 2021. And up to today, Radio Nigeria refused to implement that decision of Public Complaint Service Commission. And according to you, that has sparked a lot of outrage, especially by those who even issued the petition in, in the first place. Ha. Look. All right. I mean, let's let's now get this simple answer from and you. And have never given me one call. Just to get that straight. Okay, that established. He Should... don't even know that I'm doing all these things. Or maybe he will hear on radio or TV that uh, Chris Agu dedicated mm. the award to him and two others. Uh, that he had never called me to say thank you. And I've never cared to go and tell him this is what I'm doing because for you. Because your sole purpose is to deliver. Because it was an assignment given to me, I respect Femi Oloye. Mm. He was the one that told Haji Asif Yamama Vasa that Baba Nugida will, will kill General Vasa mm. for not doing anything, for not committing any offense. And that was why the woman so much believed in that prophet. Mm. That established, should Nigerians protest? Should the Southeast join the protest? Anyway, I'm not part of any arrangement now. The organizers did not call me. They did not inform me. And I can't join a protest that I don't know the organizers. You must know, as the national leader of Enugu Youth Movement, I'm supposed to be in the know. When I was in UK during the last protest, Yes, I received calls. And I told them that, look, I'm not in the country. I'm not around. So my prayer is that I see His Excellency Tinumbu. Mm. When he now failed to do the needful, then if monkey delivered to Roto, nobody should blame him. Last, um, just to tie this up, you know, we are looking at the state of the nation, yes. and you're saying that this prophetic message might be the solution to the travels and trials that Nigeria is going through now. Not your message, Not but the message, message that you are going to relate to him yes. that was delivered by the prophet. All right, Oji. Mm -hmm. Very clear. Um, my question is, uh, I, I saw somewhere you complain about being attacked all the time, apparently because of the support you give to, you know, um, President Bola Tinubu, right? And... Um, I would want to ask all this that you're doing for our gracious president, right? Would it be tagged somewhat from you, political, personal, or you see something very feasible to happen in this regime, which since the inception and since that mark he made, you know, you know, taking his his oath for office, right? and remove subsidy. We've been going through a lot in the country. People are suffering. They're suffering, right? So, regards all these and the, the raising eyebrow, oh, 
He's a full supporter of Tinubu, even with or without, and whatever that is going through in this country at this point in time. That uh, brings my question. Are all these political statements personal? Mm -hmm. Or you see a feasible line that at the end of the tunnel, there's a light in there this must, administration? There must, be, there must be a light. Let me tell you. By the grace of God, before Tinubu completes his four-year term, eh, Nigerians will be clamoring for somebody like him to govern this country. There's somewhere, there's a problem somewhere. There's something you need to know. Why and that's the is information you there? have. Where is, where, why did God allow him? Or meritors if God decided to give, why? That was, it's not for him or for his government to punish Nigerians. But I want you to, should I want know to that. something to your thoughts, right? You know how we behave in Nigeria, let me just put it that way, that we talked about appointees, uh, people surrounding him are the reason why maybe it seems that um, what he's trying to implement is not working fully. But I'll put it to you that every government appoints their loyalists. That's a way of settlement after every election. So why would you say that people surrounding him are not, you know, doing what they have to do. Maybe he, he, he brings out the rightful policies and whatnot. But implementations from those people who are meant to represent him and push out all those policies and make it rightful is all okay. But they are the people who he appointed and they are, the, they are his loyalists. <laughs> loyalists cannot solve his problem. His disciples will solve his problem. Those loyalists are his loyal because of what they are benefiting from him. They are not disciples. There's a difference between a loyalist and discipleship. Your disciple will follow you and make sure he do something that will give glory to God and people will say your administration is good. Loyalists will look for their pocket in as much as you are funding them and financing them, they are your loyalists. But most of them are his disciples because you, you can see so many We're of not the condemning individuals Please, who has be... followed Sinubu from Lagos all the way um, since 1999 up until now, he's the president. We are of not Nigeria. saying all his appointees are bad. No, there's no village without a witch. But in all, every village, you still get a bishop and a born again uh, child of God. So, what we are saying is that those, okay, what of the governors? Did he appoint the governors? Do you know how much the governors and local government chairman receives? But it could actually be said that what happened in the Dose that Tinubu has a hand in it, allegedly, by Which? the way, because as he asked the APC, do you want a do? And they echoed yes. And he, he was like, I'll give you a do. And we know the aftermath, we know the outcome of what happened in a do. Anyway, a do is not APC. Hmm. Anyway, um, what happened in a do? Anything any man do in this world, God will judge. You see, one thing people don't understand is that any evil done by man to man must surely be punished. So if anybody like use their position to punish people, you must pay dearly for any evil. The ultimate price. Yes, the ultimate price. So but what the point I'm making here is this. All the governors and local government chairmen, if they take care of the people within their state. Because their allocation did not fall short. The allocation continued to increase. Why is it that people within those states are still crying, poor salary, uh, pension and gratuity not paid? You see people who are blind, who have retired for many years, they will be calling them for verification. They will do verification, the first one, second one, third one. People from far places will be coming to look. Some, oh my God. Does it mean we don't have computer? The suffering is too much. And nobody is call, calling the governors. It's Chinumbu. The governors will commit, chairman will do this, pulling down of people's structure in many states, mm. even in Lagos. All right. We're out of time now, Comrade Chris Agu. Thank yes. you so much for being a part of the show today. And we hope that you are able to get this audience with Mr. President it's very important. and to relay it's, this it's message. It was going to save us. Yes. I mean, I, I would have liked to yeah. ask you the obvious, obvious question. Would you just say the message on air? <laughs> on air. If, it's on, <laughs> if you're unable to reach him, but I know that I'll no. get a loud no. note. No. I've only given one advice here on air. 
the, man, the president should appoint presidential reserve yeah. officer in, in every, every state. region and state or yeah. states. Yeah. To be his eye in all the states. But that is not the advice. That is not the prophetic message. No, it's not. Okay, that's not That advice. one is very personal. I will not say it on air because it was not meant for the general public. Yes, All right, just for the ears of just President Bolatino. So, I mean, if anybody can get across to Mr. President, you know, get this message to him that there is a prophetic message that he may be interested in to absolve us of the hardship in, in this country. And, of course, that message would be relayed by the 2023 PRP gubernatorial candidate in the Enugu election, Comrade Chris Agu, elder Comrade Chris Agu. Thank, Thank you once again for being a part of the show. Thank, Thank you very much. And we have so much more coming your way, but unfortunately, we are out of time. We'll take more on the show tomorrow. I've been your host as always, Natalie Oku. And remain on you. Watch you. I'll be Monday. Ed, bye for now.